All right, y'all, it's Crossover Thursday here, Locked on Rams and Locked on Saints. Travis Rogers and Ross Jackson here breaking down this big matchup between the Los Angeles Rams. Traveling to the Big Easy to take on the New Orleans Saints this weekend. Now we're going to dive into the three things that each of these teams needs to do to get a win. Of course, our Crossover Thursdays are always presented by Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app and use the promo code Locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you place your first $5 lineup. So, Travis, when it comes down to the things that the Rams need to do to get a win here in New Orleans, what do you think uh, the game kind of starts off with uh, for them? Like, what do they need to do to get a win? This is this is the worst answer you're ever going to hear all season I long. Here it. we are in I week 13, it. And, it, and it's it's the because it's the dumbest, most obvious answer. They 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 they, they what, what are the three what are the three things we talking about? Don't turn it over, yeah. block, and don't miss kicks. <laughs> I like right? the block like, like, edition. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just like this, this is not super complicated. This, right, Tyron Williams has fumbled five times in the last seven games. Mm-hmm. That can't and and that that's, can't continue. That's big. That that's crazy, you know. He that that game uh, against the Eagles got off to a weird start because he put it on the ground on their first series. They don't block anybody up front. That Matthew Stafford has very little time, and Josh Carty, who they spent a draft pick on, and got off to a good start. He was, they, you know, I, I think Rams fans were were pretty pleased. I know the everydayers were, were listening to Doug and I talk about him, the Carty party that was kind of being thrown at, at the early part of the season. And he was good. And it felt like he had some range out to maybe the, the low 50s that you felt pretty good. Well, that's not true anymore. He's he's missing more than he's making. So, you know, hey, you know, call me a football genius. Don't turn it over. Block and make kicks. It's a, It's a pretty good formula to win a game. It's got to be a big part of it, right? I mean, gosh, that's about it. That's about all it takes. All right, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. No, but, uh, <laughs> look, and I think that I think look, the the Saints, the Saints kind of path to winning is 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 pretty simple as well. They got to be able to run the ball effectively. They've got to be able to get pressure on on the opposing quarterback while keeping their quarterback clean. And they have to continue to win in the special teams battle. I think special teams. I'm glad that you brought up kicking. I think special teams is going to be big in this game. I don't know if you've seen. But there's some voodoo going on in the Superdome right now, Travis. Uh, okay. There's uh, two weeks ago, Young Way Koo missed three kicks in the Superdome for the first time in his career. First time he ever missed three kicks uh, in a game. And then last week, Dustin Hopkins missed another three kicks. Uh, wow. One of them, two of them on the same drive, because one of them ended up, he missed the field goal. It got called for defensive holding on a field goal, which I'll never understand. First time I've ever seen that. But guys, so. Yeah, right. So then they got another couple of plays at the end of the at the end of the half. And then in the greatest ball don't lie movement, Dustin Hopkins lines up for a shorter kick and misses the opposite direction. Uh, so just it, it's been insane here. Meanwhile, Blake Groupie and the New Orleans Saints kicker has been great here as of late. Maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud, but I think we've all said it anyway. Uh, But whatever special teams coordinator now turned interim head coach Darren Rizzi is doing, whatever Grigri he buried somewhere on the Superdome grounds, it's working against opposing quarterbacks. I mean, sorry, opposing kickers. Yeah, the the Rams are hanging on by the skin of their teeth with their their special (laughs) teams because, look, they they brought back Chase Blackburn as their special teams coach, and I think everybody Mm -hmm. wanted Say what now that he came back really? for another year because they they were they had the worst special teams in football last year mm-hmm. and you know you rarely does worst special teams in football and playoff team go hand in hand and somehow right. some way they still made the playoffs despite having some really dreadful special teams performances they they kind of ran it back they they changed out some personnel uh, it really it, it's better but it's not a lot better so mm. I. Maybe that voodoo that you're talking about that the Rams are kicking so squirrely right now, maybe it'll drive it through the uprights because everybody's talking, oh, you know, they got to make these goalposts a little closer. It's getting too easy for these guys. Like, watch a Rams game. No, it's not. It's not yeah, I, it's easier I, for them. I love that from the moment that that suggestion became a hotly debated <laughs> uh, debate uh, uh, conversation, NFL kickers just completely did themselves in, have done themselves in week over week. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. They said, watch (laughs) this. You think we need these skinnier? Give me a second. And they have been (laughs) awful, awful so far throughout the season. Almost bad as the officiating. Uh, The other things that I think that the (laughs) – we won't go there. We won't go there. It's all right. Uh, Okay, wait. I will say this. I will say this real quick. There's no reason that Nick Sirianni should have been able to change his mind after accepting that penalty. I've never okay. seen that before. I, I I I assumed, and apparently it isn't. I assumed there was a rule that once I say I want to do A, I don't get a look at the other guy's cards and then say ah, I changed my mind. I'd like to do B. Yeah. I've yeah. never seen that happen. And that was wild. Uh, 
it, and again, that, that's not why the Rams lost the game. They lost no, the game because no, no. Saquon Barkley is superhuman. But I mean, three hundred two total yards. Like, what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah, that was that was bizarre. Yeah, for for anybody that maybe that that that, that didn't see it, there was a I think it was a third and three that uh, ended up there was a holding penalty on an incomplete yes. pass, if I recall correctly. Yes. And Nick Sirianni accepted, or sorry, declined the holding penalty. Right. Saw Sean McVay send the Rams offense back out to go for it on fourth and three, and then said, "Ah, never mind, never mind, never mind." And then accepted the penalty, and they allowed him to accept the penalty. I, I, and, I, I, that's exactly yeah, yeah. right. And yeah. and there's one other wrinkle to this that I feel necessary because I've been thinking about it for for days, and I and I can't quite come up with it. Why would he have thought they were going to kick it the first time? They were down 13 right. points. It's late. What in the are you doing? Quarter. Like, what yeah. did you think they were going to do? That's yeah. the part that's like, and look, Eagles are good. They're, them and the Lions have kind of separated from the pack. But yeah. if I were an Eagles fan and saw that, I'm going, what is going through that dude's head? Like, there, there's no scenario in the world where the Rams were going to kick that field goal. Nick Sirianni is presently the worst NFL coach of a winning team. Right now, I have no doubt in my mind. I would anyway, sorry, this this is not an Eagles podcast. If you want that, you can go check out Gino and Louie over at Locked on Eagles. They've got you taken care of. Yeah. Travis and I are just we're we're just bonkers about football. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but I think the other thing here is that like the Saints have got to run the football well, and I'm sure that goes. That, I'm sure that that goes just as as important for the uh, Los Angeles Rams as well. The Saints have been a weak run defense. The Rams have allowed over 151 rushing yards uh, per game on in, in away games and are coming off of the game where Saquon Barkley just went nuts and so far and everything. So the Saints have to be able to try to take advantage of that as well. I do want to mention that, of course, is a huge part of this game, I'm sure, from both sides. Yeah, for sure. The Ra I, I, I've been, you know, and maybe if the Rams lose this game to the Saints, we'll get to see something that I've been calling for for, a, a, I don't want to say a few weeks, maybe a few months. Why do we draft Blake Corum the third round never to mm. use him? He, he really mm. hasn't played much at all. Kyron Williams keeps fumbling. The Rams, it's not, like the, it's not like Kyron Williams is a fumbler who also will rip off a bunch of 20 and 30 yard runs. That's right. not the sort of back he is. He's kind of a, you know, a grinded out sort of guy. And I don't think he's a bad player, but he's not an explosive player. Let's take a look at the other guy. Maybe, maybe it's the same and without the fumbles. And that would feel, I mean, I get it. There's pass pro and Matthew Stafford is all of those things, but. The, the clock on Blake uh, Corum has been ticking for a minute for me. I'd really like to see him play more. Yeah, absolutely. He had a nice, great acceleration on one of the runs that I saw mm -hmm. from him uh, on Sunday night up against the Eagles and things like that. It was his only one. Like, I was, yeah, I was like, why don't they give him the ball to this guy a little bit? They have You can see the juice. You can see the juice. They haven't so used We'll him. see. Strange. We'll see if maybe he gets uh, if he gets involved here uh, up against yeah. New Orleans, and of course the Saints themselves over on their side will have Alvin Kamara, of course, to be able to lean on as well, who is on track for his first thousand yard rushing season, which feels so weird to say he's never had one. That's, Isn't that crazy? Uh, I've never gotten that big wrong. Big yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never know. had a thousand yard rushing season. Hmm. What staring down, staring down at it now uh, up here in year what almost seven eight at this point. So good for him. Good for him because he deserves it.